on an all-new Dr. Phil. Is she obsessing? I love jazz. I asked her, can you marry me and can you adopt me? Over someone she's never met. I talk to her all the time. I'm talking to her in my head right now. You make a 14-hour drive. You message her, I'm here. And she says, leave me alone. Maybe this girl does kind of mess with me. She doesn't know you. She told me that I needed to find the God to pray to. I started praying to Morgan Friedman's face, but calling him Denzel Washington in my head. What happens? Jasmine is in the building when they finally meet. Let's do it. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today is going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. We met 21-year-old Bailey, who says she has the greatest love story of the century. She met Jasmine on social media eight months ago, and it was love at first post. She says they've been communicating day and night, but have never spoken on the phone and have never met. Now, when I first tried to talk to her, she became insistent that her mother, Erica, not participate. Here's what's happened so far. My whole life changed the day I met Jazz. I talked to her in my head. Even though I've never met her in person, she's with me in really weird subliminal universe ways. Jasmine talks to me by moving things in my apartment in a sense that she's not talking to me. She's letting me know she's there. She's moving the water in my water bottle right now. The water is physically fluttering in this cup. You don't just want to be like, I see stuff move in my apartment. But, um... I do. She can actually move hangers, and if you pay attention, she's moving this one. She didn't start doing all the crazy stuff until I believed. And so as I started to believe, things started to appear differently to me, and I started to develop a relationship with her in my head to where I would hear her say things to me, and then I'd feel crazy because I'd be like, no, this is not real, this is not true. Who talks to people in their head? Bailey's mom, Erica, says she's lost her daughter to this fixation with Jasmine. Bailey is completely delusional about her love life. About eight months ago, Bailey told me she was a lesbian and that she had met someone. Bailey would get very upset when Jasmine wouldn't contact her, and I actually told her several times to get rid of Jasmine and move on. Then, when Bailey told me that Jasmine was moving things into her apartment, I felt very scared. Right now, I fear for my daughter's sanity. Bailey, how are you? Um, not good. Yeah, why is that? I was told that y'all brought someone here that I explicitly said not to bring. Who's that? My biological mother. Would you like to leave? Because you can certainly leave, because nobody tells me who to put on my show, including you. I really want to talk to you, and I really want to help you, but I... I just, I don't live in fantasy land. You say that you truly think it's the love story of the century, but you've never physically met. No, sir. And y'all can laugh at me. It's fine. I will be your spectacle. You can all laugh at me. It's well, fine. you know what? I think we're just going to shut this down because you're saying the audience is making a spectacle out of you. That's not what I'm about. That's not what I do. I had you come here to help you. I don't play those kind of games. So I'm going to let Bailey move on, and we'll talk to Bailey's mom. Growing up, I felt like my mom never allowed me to be who I was as a true person. I have lived my whole life never feeling like I was good enough for my mother. She had the expectation today that she was coming on stage and getting proposed to. And when she got here and Jasmine wasn't on stage and yeah. saw that I was here, I think she just put up her defenses. There's not one chance in hell that I would talk with her without her responsible parent here. Well, there wasn't a chance in hell I wasn't going to be here. Well, no, and of course not. You and I need to work together to get this very talented, bright, creative young woman back on the right track. I'm going to give her a second chance. I don't know how this will go, but we're going to have Bailey rejoin us next. Baby girl, you're okay. He's gonna help you. Come on. I, I, I'm glad you're back. Tell me why you wanted to come back out here at this point. Um, I wanted to apologize 
-hmm. for the fact that uh, I was presenting myself in a way that was less than... Um, I know that I need help with the issues that I have, that I deal with. Um, and so I just I wanted to <clears throat> apologize to you and come back out here and get the help that I need. You've, uh, you've said plenty, okay? You said plenty. You don't need to say another thing. Uh, joining us now, I introduce you to him, is Dr. Charles Sophie, who is on the Dr. Phil Advisory Board. He is board certified in three clinical specialties, adult psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and family practice. He's also a dear friend of mine, and we've worked together for years. Uh, he and I have been studying this situation so we can help you the best. Now, I want to start with a, f a few things. And I guess it's kind of a reality test. Um, you acknowledge that you've never met Jasmine, right? Yes, sir. And you acknowledge that um, the brief communications that you've had with her have been via text, right? Uh, yes, sir. It's been through uh, Twitter and it's been yeah. through Instagram messages. Yeah, that's why I'm not very tech savvy. It's been through typing. Gotcha. Okay. And in those messages, she's been pretty forthcoming about her position of not knowing you, not having a relationship with you. Uh, here's an example between Bailey and, and Jasmine. Uh, Jasmine says, why am I your header? Uh, Bailey, why am I not yours? And Jasmine says, because I don't know you. And Bailey says, yes, you do. And Jasmine says, no, I don't. So just in that exchange, tell me what you take away from that. Because you're really smart. Because she is saying this to my face. But the problem is, is I started following it and she started subtweeting. And I <clears throat> tweeted right before I left. I said, tell me not to drive to Atlanta. And she tweets, I don't care, I don't care. I'll adore you all damn day. And so that's what made me decide to drive. Um, the reason I would... Whoa, 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 whoa. I said I wasn't tech savvy. What's a subtweet? Subtweet is basically where you, um, you talk about someone, but you don't tag them. And so they don't know for sure that it's about you or not. Excuse me. <clears throat> and so that's something that I would deal with, is not knowing if it was about me or not. Okay, so a subtweet is you interpret something yes, that's sir. been written. So it, you, you don't know that it was directed to you. That's just you reading that into the text. Yes, sir. Okay, well then on... April 3rd of 17, Bailey says, full tank of gas and $100. I'm coming for you. Parents don't know. I'm running for you, baby. And Jasmine says, not in a subtweet, what are you talking about? Bailey says, I'm coming to blank city. Blank got too wild. If you want to see me, I'll be in town. Jasmine says, again, not in a subtweet, I don't know you. What don't you understand about that? That's pretty direct, right? Yes, sir, it is. How, interpret that for me. Um, there was a video on her Twitter, and I told her that that video got me to eat because I have anorexia, um, and she would retweet that video. Um, and so that's how I started to follow her. I knew that I had to pay attention to her pages because uh -huh. I knew that that was the way we were going to talk because directly she was telling me not to talk to her. And I was like, okay, no, I won't talk to you. I, I'm okay. I'm so sorry. I won't talk to you. I will not. I will not bother you. I won't. Like, I won't. And then she would tweet something. Um, or what started to happen was she would delete a picture, like on Instagram. Um, and so that's kind of how I would know that I was still allowed to message her, was I would be messaging her and I would be scared, but then she would delete a photo. And so I would continue to message her and then she would delete a photo. And I have screenshots of all of this in my phone. Yeah. I delete photos every day. I'm not telling you to tweet me. <laughs> yes, sir, I understand. Put back up what we were just talking about. Tell me, she says, I don't know you. What don't you understand about that? Now, how does her deleting some random photo override this? Uh, 
because it wasn't just the photo that happened. Um, well, 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 but explain this. How do you interpret this? I understand and interpret that as she doesn't know me, that I don't understand that I should have stopped. I started to see things move. Can I bring all of y'all on a little field trip and just show you? And if you want to lock me up afterwards and call me crazy, that's okay. And later, Jasmine is here in the building. Jasmine, come on in. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. What did Daddy do to you? A father accused of the unthinkable. I had medical proof that she was sexually assaulted. He waited seven days to take her to a pediatrician? It was about five days. I was in shock. Did you call the police? Immediately. Immediately. The police report says you called 16 days later. Did you molest your daughter? Absolutely not. Come on, tell the truth. You are out of your mind. You say you have unequivocal proof. Show physical evidence and put me in jail. I have. He has his hands. Here it is. It says diaper rash. Sexual abuse. It does not say sexual abuse. That's Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. You make a 14-hour drive, right? Yes, sir. 14 hours and so you message her I'm here if you want to meet me I'm stranded in a McDonald's parking lot I thought you wanted to meet me this morning I haven't slept I'm not driving safely and she says I don't leave me alone I'm blocking you okay tell me how you interpret that that I should have left her alone. No, but, but how do you interpret those words? Wait. I don't leave me alone. I'm blocking you. That I shouldn't talk to her and I shouldn't contact her. You said this is the love story of the century. It is, yes, sir. When you read that, how do you say this is the love story of the century? Don't tell me what you think I want to hear. Tell me what you really think. Um... I started to see things move, and they have, they have footage of it, um, but I would never have believed this had, uh, had stuff not started moving um, on me, and I was freaked out. It started one night, the door started moving on me, and I was scared, um, and... Okay, well, you say we have footage because the water rippled? It was um, a shirt on a rack. Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Yeah. Have you studied the principle of parsimony? No, sir, I have not. Have you studied Occam's razor? No, sir, I have not. I don't okay. know what those words mean. I'm sorry. Okay. Here's, here's what they mean. The simplest explanation of a phenomenon is more often best. So you, there's some phenomenon like a shirt moving or water rippling. Now, that could be Jasmine, who... I suppose has, your theory is that she has some kind of um, psychokinetic powers that can move objects from uh, 12, 1300 miles away. Or, I asked the crew about that, she said, we have footage of it. Uh -huh. And we also have audio. And you know what the audio reveals at the time that that moved? The, the blouse moved and the water rippled. What, what did it reveal? The air conditioner kicked on. <laughs> What's more likely that some woman 1,200 miles away who's saying, leave me alone, is psychokinetically moving that blouse, or is it more likely that the air conditioner kicked on and What's more likely? It's more likely that the air conditioner kicked on. I mean, do you believe that, or is that what you think I want to hear? Um, I believe that it is likely that the air conditioner turned on, but it's hard for me to believe, and I almost want to be like, can I bring all of y'all on a little field trip and just show you so that you can see it move in front of me, and if you want to lock me up afterwards and call me crazy, that's okay. How, how do you square that with her saying, I don't know you, leave me alone. It comes to God, honestly. Um, so when I first met her, she told me that I needed a God, that I needed to find a God to pray to. 
So I didn't know who to pray to. And I know this is going to sound wild to y'all. Well, it's going to sound a little crazy. Um, but I started thinking of a man in my head to pray to that was God. And so I start picturing Morgan Friedman, but I actually mistaken him for Denzel Washington. I'm going to tell him what you said. And he said, sorry, I'm so sorry. Uh, so anyway, I started praying to Morgan Friedman's face, but calling him Denzel Washington in my head. And something that I had been very vocal about was just putting all of my feelings on the internet at the time because I wanted her to know what I was feeling because that's what we were technically working on. I have felt like a crazy girl this whole time. And so I start praying to Denzel Washington in my head and I don't tell anybody. And I'm on the floor one night, it's four o'clock in the morning and I'm crying with my dog. And I'm like, is she up? I don't know if she's up, is she up? And I go to her Twitter page and I see, do you believe in Denzel Washington, like deja vu real? And it was such a moment for me, because I was like, how could you have known that I pray in my head to Morgan, to Morgan Friedman, who's actually Denzel Washington? And that is the one, that's one of the one things that I held on to as like, hey, that's something she shouldn't know. Do you know that there's a movie, Deja Vu, starring Denzel Washington? No, sir, I don't. Yeah. And actually, Morgan Freeman did play God in Bruce Almighty. Yeah, that's, that's why I started praying to yeah. him, because I was like, I don't know who to pray to. So there's lots of coincidences that could explain these loose associations that don't trump a direct message from her saying, leave me alone. I don't know you. I tried to block Bailey, but she just makes new profiles and messaging me again. Bailey has sent me thousands of naked pictures and videos through all social media platforms. I don't want to see any of them. And later... I don't know what to say to y'all. I thought, and I was under the pretense that she was, she was coming here. This February... I believe that Tyler Perry is raising my son. So you are married to Tyler Perry? Yes, I am. I have not seen him face to face. How did somebody get eggs out of your body? I don't know. Who does know? Tyler knows. You dig deeper. My younger sister faked being pregnant. You gave her a positive pregnancy stick. Where'd you get it? To uncover the truth. You knew you weren't pregnant. Why did you do that? I don't know. I don't accept that answer. You'll fight stronger. My mom is so religious. She thinks any skirt over the knee is sinful. To protect the innocent. You try to read the Harry Potter books? It promotes witchcraft. There's something wrong with you. You're a waste of a life. I'm sorry, Dr. Phil, but... Well, you should be sorry. You've not said one positive thing about this young woman since you walked out here. This February. It's very hard to watch your child and to see all the good slipping away. It's like she's Bailey, but she's not the person I knew. Because I know that over half the things that she's telling me can't possibly be true. And so then that makes me doubt the other things that she's telling me that may be true. She's not a child anymore, but she's my child. It's killing me. The question is, why do you attend to a blouse moving on a rack or something that you see move in your apartment but you don't attend to a direct message of her saying, leave me alone. Why do you attend to one but not the other? Um, the day after she got the turtle tattoo, I leave my house and I pick up the phone and I'm talking to nobody. Um, and I say, this is wild to me. I can't believe that that's for me, but I think it's for me because I have been wearing those two turtle shirts. You know, you came into my life at a very weird time, and I'm talking to nobody on the phone. And I say, I have this sunflower card, and I was going to give it to the person that I marry because I want to be your forever flower. The very next day, she goes out, and she gets two flower tattoos above the turtle. Why would you assign meaning to that but not sign a meaning to her saying, leave me alone? Because I had to follow her page and see when she would delete things, see when she would retweet things. I understand. But you have a direct message to you. These you're, you're reading something into. You have a direct message from her saying, leave me alone. Why do you ignore that but not the other? Um, the night I found her, her Twitter said, um, 
take the road less traveled, I'll lead you. And so through this entire experience, I have allowed myself to feel like the crazy girl, to feel like I'm talking to someone that I shouldn't be talking to, that I'm making sense of things that shouldn't be made sense of, that it's ridiculous, I shouldn't be doing this. There are plenty of people in this world for me to be with, make relationships with. There's plenty of people here for in the real world for me to talk to, you know? And so I just, I wouldn't, it's been, it's been a daily battle. It's been every single day, wake up and feel like, are you crazy or are you not? I, I know people use the word crazy, just slang, and I, and I do too. I say, oh man, that's crazy. But when you use it in this context of describing yourself, crazy is a derogatory term. Um, and y you're not crazy as you're using that term. Is there a mental illness here? I don't know. Are you confused? Definitely, I think you're confused. What do you, what, what, you're, you're sitting here awfully quiet, which is <laughs> unusual for you. It is. So it's too painful for you to do what Dr. Phil is suggesting. These don't fit, I should let her alone. Why do you think it's so painful? To, to leave her alone? Yeah, and to realize that you're using these loose associations. Um, because she kept I feel doing things. But why is it painful for you why is it to see painful? it as a reality? Um, because I see the things in my apartment move and I have videos of them moving and I've shown my friends and my friends have seen them and my friends have videos of them at home. But you're staying in that world. Yes, sir. Why won't you come to the real world? Why is it so painful to be with us? To be with you? Emotionally. I don't know. Maybe you can help me with that. That's why you're here. You start to interpret things to support your belief that just aren't true. There's no sense in proceeding forward and being like, Jasmine, we need to be together. Jasmine is here. She's in the building. I want to play a piece of tape for you that Jasmine made for us. Let's play the Jasmine tape. Bailey has me looking over my shoulder all the time. Her messages are getting more and more crazy. After seven months of harassment, I did some investigating myself, and I found Bailey's mother. We found out that Bailey made a fake contact and put my picture in her phone. And Bailey was sending herself messages pretending they were me. I explained that I wasn't in a relationship with Bailey. So her mother just told me to continue to block Bailey. I tried to block Bailey, but she just makes new profiles and messages me again. Bailey has sent me thousands of naked pictures and videos through all social media platforms. I don't want to see any of it. I tried to stop her by posting her naked pictures publicly, but then Bailey reported me and got my business page deleted. Bailey's mother told me not to call the police, but she couldn't do anything to stop Bailey from contacting me. I don't think Bailey's mother can help, and I don't think she wants to. At this point, I feel like Dr. Phil is the only one that can help. What's your reaction to what she has to say? Uh, my reaction to what she has to say is that um, I would never have put my time and my effort into a woman that I didn't think genuinely cared about me. And so if this is the woman that I believe I've been talking to and she's saying she doesn't know me, I mean, there's nothing more for, for, me, to, for me to do. It's not, it's not my place. Consent is huge to me. Um, I truly, I believed and I followed something. And like I said, I, I could play it all out for y'all, but it's okay. Um, there's no sense in proceeding forward and being like, Jasmine, we need to be together, if that makes sense. Um, I would never have continued to, cont to, to message her to do the things that I did had I not felt like there was something. And so to see that and to see her say that in that video, it just, it's not, I just, I want to apologize to her. I believe what you're saying 100%. This may be the first time we've agreed with something 100%. Because I don't think you would do that if you believed that you aren't welcome. And I believe you sincerely when you say consent's a very big thing to you. And when you say you're violating her consent, you say you wouldn't want to do that to anyone. No, sir. And you didn't think that. You believed that you were being invited in. Yes, sir. I think you're beginning to see that that's not the case. No, sir. And I, I want to tell you why 
I, th I think you've been doing that. And I, I made a list, actually, okay. because I think there have been some traumas that you have experienced. And in September of 15, there was a stairwell attack mm -hmm. at school. And we don't need to go into a lot of detail about what it was. You and I know what all was involved there because you've been forthcoming with us about that. But it was certainly traumatic, right? Yes, sir. And, uh, and by the way, I'm very sorry that that happened to you. That's, that's not okay. Then next, summer of 16, you experienced rape by a friend. That's very traumatic. And then somewhere between summer of 16 and October, November, which we'll get to in a minute, there was an isolated incident with a boyfriend that was drunk and you were abused in that isolated incident. And then October, November of 16 is when the miscarriage takes place. I'm very sorry for that as well. And then February, uh, assault again, this time hand around the neck, throws you against the wall, hits your head against the wall, enough that you've got to go get an MRI. Um, and that's not good. So we have this trauma, this trauma, this trauma, this trauma, this trauma, and it's the very next month that you start this obsession with Jasmine. Sometimes, as a defense mechanism, we do what's called dissociate. And we decide it's much safer if we just kind of live in our heads a little bit. We kind of escape into a fantasy that can't hurt you. It doesn't hit you. It doesn't attack you, doesn't assault you, it doesn't, it, it's, it's one-sided. And so there's not a lot of risk in it because you're controlling all the narrative and you start to interpret things to support your belief that just aren't true. And I, I, I hope you're seeing that they're not true. Jasmine is not interested in a relationship with you. And she doesn't deserve to be harassed by you. No, she does not. Jasmine is here. What do you think? I think you're right. I truly, I think that I did use going and putting my emotional state <clears throat> in somebody else. Um, I did. I found a relationship that was separate where someone couldn't hurt me. Um, and I, I thought, um, and I was under the pretense that she was, she was coming here. Um, and I see now that you cannot make somebody love you. You cannot force somebody to love you. Um, and so I see that what I did was not, that I do, like, I do need some help. It's, I just, I don't know what to say to y'all because I just, I see my place now. Does that make sense? Well, it does. If you're, you're I keep saying you're very smart and I, I want you to be honest with me. I don't want you to tell me what you think I want to hear and by just agreeing with whatever I'm saying because I, I, I really want to help you here. And one thing I can tell you for certain is that Jasmine is not interested in a relationship with you. She's not being against you, she doesn't even know you. But she has her own life, her own friends, her own loves, her own pursuits. She doesn't know you, she has no interest in knowing you. She's nothing against you, she just doesn't know you. And she doesn't deserve to be harassed by you. No, she does not. And you don't deserve to be wasting time in a fantasy relationship. You need to heal yourself and right. and have a healthy relationship. And you, you think smoking pot doesn't really hurt anything, but that's really not true, it is it? It definitely hurts a lot. It changes your brain chemistry. You're already running from pain to non-pain, and now you're also numbing yourself, so you don't ever have to feel anything. So you gotta get sober, and then you gotta come back to reality and deal with the painful events of your life and get past them. 
Do you even know if you're a lesbian, or is that a place you ran also? Um, I don't consider myself, uh, I think it's more about the person. Right. Um, I've never been with a woman before. I've kissed a woman, but I've never been with a woman. Right. Um, so I think it, I think it's unfair to say that I'm a lesbian because I've never been with a woman. Mm -hmm. um, so you have a lot to figure out. Yeah. But you've got to come back to this side. Yes, sir. As scary as it is. Yes, sir. But with good support, you should be able to do it and be very, very successful. I think so, too. Well, Bailey says she's been waiting eight months to finally meet Jasmine. She says now that she wants to apologize to her. Um, what would she say to her if she was going to apologize to her? Uh, I'm going to ask her when we come back. This is the person that you've sent endless amounts of messages and texts and pictures and all. It's hard to look you in the eyes right now. I believe in us in a really strange way. I just want to be like, no, it's real, but you're telling me it's not. The number one show in daytime is taping now. All we need is you. You're going to be in the Los Angeles area and want to watch a live taping of the Dr. Phil Show? Call 323-461-PHIL. That's 323-461-7445 or visit drphil.com. Tickets are free and I hope to see you soon. Well, for those of you at home, we've just been gone, I don't know, probably 90 seconds or something while we were running some commercials. For those of you in the studio, you know that we've been having kind of a sub-meeting here on stage, and I'll tell you why. Uh, Jasmine is here. She's in the building. And I am always loath to put certain people together. I never put an abused person together with their abuser. I don't put someone that's being stalked together with their stalker. Um, I, I don't do those things unless there are circumstances that suggest that it would be constructive and that both parties are okay with it. I've been talking to Bailey, I've been talking to her mother, and Bailey tells me that as painful as it is to come to grips with this, that she recognizes that she has escaped from reality into kind of building up this fantasy relationship in her mind. And she says she absolutely commits to stopping that. And she just wants to apologize to get closure on this whole thing. And Jasmine has agreed to participate in that and nothing more. You, you concur do. with yes. doing it to this point? Yep. All right, absolutely. Jasmine is here. Jasmine, come on out. You're a champ, girl. Uh, Jasmine, this is Erica. Y'all have had a little bit of contact. This is Bailey. Uh, this is Dr. Charles Sophie. You've been watching everything from the top, right? Yes, so sir. you've heard everything that's been talked about. Yes, sir. You're the one that contacted us. You wrote in and said, I have a problem here and I want to solve it in a constructive way. You don't want to hurt her or, or yourself. Right. And I'm glad, I'm glad you wrote in. It's a responsible thing to do, and I appreciate it. So this is the person that you've sent endless amounts of messages and texts and pictures and all to. And you, while you wish her no ill, you, you have no relationship with her, correct? No, sir. You don't want a relationship with her, no, correct? Sir. There's been no subtext messages, no subconscious hidden meaning messages? No, sir. Uh, do you have any kind of kinetic powers to... <laughs> no, I'm... I, I wish, but no, <laughs> yeah. I, no, I don't. I, you, the, that's not something that you dabble in or no. whatever at all, no. at all. So I just wanted to clear that up. But yeah. what did you want to say? That I'm sorry. I never would have done what I did had I not believed in you and I. Um, it's hard to look you in the eyes right now. Why is that? 
I believed in something crazy. And I'm sorry that I hurt you. It's hard. It's so hard. I don't want to look at you and be like, it's all an act. You're acting. You're acting. Right. Like, stop. But, um, I'm done. It's kind of like... <sighs> I believe in us in a really strange way. And it sucks that this is the way we're doing it because I just want to be like, no, it's real, but you're telling me it's not. And so I just want to apologize to you for harassing you. I appreciate that. I think you're a smart person. I think you're a beautiful person, you know? But like I've been telling you for eight months, I don't know you, so I don't, I don't want to have a, a relationship with you like that. Absolutely. You, know? you are making a commitment that you will have no further contact with her. None. And I, I have your word on that. You have my word. I won't message you again. I won't send you another picture of me. Um, this meant something for you. So. Okay, but Work good. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. Now, Jasmine is the one who wrote in, so I would like to spend some time talking with her one-on-one -on -one, uh, after we come back. I'll say goodbye to uh, these folks and visit with Jasmine for a few minutes after the break. We'll be right back. Want to know what's coming up on Dr. Phil? Visit our website and subscribe to our email newsletter. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on drphil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. Well, I'm back. I have excused Erica and Bailey and wanted to take just a moment here with Dr. Sophie and, and Jasmine. Jasmine, the main thing I wanted to say is, uh, number one, thank you for writing in. Everybody that's here it is a teaching tool because it really, there are many, many people that are in similar situations. And number two, and really most important, is thank you for being kind in this because you have a lot of reason to be really pissed off about this because you have been uh, you've been really you've been really harassed and I mean she's you'd block her and she's come up with what 50 different new accounts and she would get back on and friend and I mean it's like stomping ants you know you just can't get them all and it's just gone on and on but this has been tough though right yeah and um, I, 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 we, I just want you to know that we are going to get her some help. I don't know that this is going to be a success-only journey uh, because I saw her kind of flashing in and out a little bit while we were talking and showing you this, and I could go over some tweets with you. It was, she, she kept flashing it out, but I think she made great strides while she was here. Absolutely. But I don't think it's necessarily 100% success only journey. Just don't react. Right. I think you're going to see a huge drop off. There may be a couple of blips up before it extinguishes completely, but yeah. just don't react okay. and you'll be fine. And I, I'm glad you wrote in. So I assume you watch the show some. So you. Yeah, my, um, I grew up with my grandmother, so she watches your show. She doesn't know I'm on here, actually, so it's, I, I can't wait till she, she sees it. Yeah, well, look, uh, where, where's your, look, look right there and say hi to your grandma. What's up, grandma? <laughs> all right, I want to thank all of my guests today. A special thanks to you, Dr. Sophie. I appreciate it. And really, thank you for your graciousness and kindness of spirit in dealing with this woman. Uh, for more information about today's show, go to drphil.com. If you want to join in on the conversation, you can head to Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I will be there, and uh, I'll take it in the right vein, I promise. Uh, thank you for being here so long. Thanks so much. I really appreciate it. Best of luck to you.